What's up guys, today I'm going to be fixing three teams submitted by viewers and rating them out of 10 before and after my changes. But first, let's go over some rules. Rule number one, I will be rating teams based solely on top level competitive viability. It's not to say meme teams aren't funny or should never be used, but it's not the place for them here. Rule two, I will rate each team on a scale of zero to 10. Zero to two being a near guaranteed loss at a top level, 2 to 4, a likely loss at a top level, 5 to 6, decent but needs some work, 7 to 8, strong but still has a few flaws, and 9 to 10, very strong, almost no flaws. Rule number 3, I will not change the key Pokemon or goal of a team when fixing it. Even if that Pokemon is unviable, we're going to work with the original vision of the creator. So first up, we have a Jolteon offense by Cool Michael Yu. So let's take a look at this. Uh, starting off with a Jolteon, running a Flame Orb Quick Feet set, so Quick Feet when your status speed is 1.5, Flame Orb of course better than Toxic Orb here, and set of Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Terra Blast Ice, and Alluring Voice. I would say this is the optimal Jolteon set, uh, you could maybe go Modest, but this is, if you were going to use Jolteon other than a sub combine Terra Blast set, this is probably the way to do it. We've got a really interesting Gouging Fire here, Morning Sun, Sunny Day, Burning Bulwark, and Flare Blitz. So really interesting here, just one attack, and that is a fire type and no setup. We've got a Glide score here, fairly standard, kind of interesting, no protect, but for the most part, a relatively normal Glide score. A Choice Banded, uh, regular Ogre Pawn with just uh, spikes as a tech option. Completely standard Iron Crown and a really interesting defensive Quackwaval here. So just absolute max defense with this really odd Aqua Jet set. Uh, so let's go over some issues with this team. First of all, nothing beats Glow King. Like look at every single thing on this team. You kind of have Gliscor, which I mean even Assault Vest sets. Like an Assault Vest Glow King with Ice Beam would run through this entire team. Uh, there's there's pretty much nothing that really wants to take it on on this entire squad and even if it is just like a standard chili reception set it's still going to live hits from Gliscor and be chili receptioning and future sighting so the glow king matchup with this team is absolutely unacceptable next thing uh, you've got jolteon here is like a very weak volt switcher that's whole thing is it's speed it's really fast but you don't have a breaker for it to volt switch into like if this glow if this jolteon volt switch is on a glow king on a Blissey, on a Spadef Garganak, like what do you go into? I mean, you kind of have this, but this isn't really a breaker. This is, it's really not, I mean, with just Grass and Fairy Stab, I mean, you're getting hard walled by so many things in the tier, so many common steel types. Uh, this is not really a reliable breaker. I would want something that could take advantage of Jolteon Volt Switch more. Next thing is uh, Instant Loss to Stall. There is nothing on this team that is ever going to, like this is doing nothing. This is doing, I guess, something with Psychic Noise, kind of, but realistically, an Iron Crown, an AV Iron Crown is never getting through a stall team. Jolteon, obviously nothing. This Gouging Fire, I mean, you, you can just, there's, the only thing on this team that has even a chance of doing something, no, is actually nothing, because this just gets hardwalled by Corv. So the stall matchup is abysmal. And uh, I think the other thing is uh, uh, Roaring Moon and Dragapult. I mean, look at, like, Roaring Moon just sets up and wins. There's nothing that can take... I mean, you can you can try to cheese with Burning Bulwark. That's pretty much it. If the Roaring Moon is, like, taunt or substitute and sees that the Burning Bulwark... Or just clicks Earthquake, really, since, since you're Terra Fire. No, Roaring Moon matchup is unfortunate. Dragapult, you see Shadow Ball. I mean, it comes in for free on Quackwaval and Shadow Balls the entire team. And also just some bad sets. Like this set's terrible, to be honest. This set is absolutely awful. Um, manual sunny day setting and just just flare blitz, like no boosting at all. I mean, this is a, not a good use of a gouging fire. Uh, and then this Quackle Ball is absurd. Like this Aqua Jet, I don't, I don't understand why you'd have Aqua Jet on here. What's it doing to anything? Like Quackle Ball actually gets some moves that are decent. Util it gets knockoff. Like the fact that you would use this slot on Aqua Jet is definitely not a good use. Uh, so I'd give this team initially, I would say, a 3 out of 10. Honestly, pretty bad. I could not see this winning almost in any high-level setting. But uh, but let's fix it. So start with Jolteon. As I said, you could go Modest. Uh, you could go Timid. Uh, the, the good thing about Timid is it does outspeed plus one Roaring Moon. So we'll keep it 
We'll keep it uh, timid for now, but you could experiment, play around with Modest and see how often uh, you're feeling the pain of that change. Next, uh, we're going to get rid of Gouging Fire, and I know Gouging Fire is now banned. I started working on this team and testing and trying out some differences before, and I immediately knew Gouging Fire was going to be taken off the team even before it got banned, because everything else on this team is structurally important in some way, but the Gouging Fire is just here. Uh, it's really not doing much offensively or defensively. So I wanted to replace this with a dark cry. And here's the vision I was having. So we've got hazards. We've got Stealth Rock and Goliath score. We've got spikes. We need something that can take advantage of this Jolteon Volt switching in. So I wanted to go with this dark cry set. Knock off Dark Pulse Ice Beam Sludge Bomb. And I really like this because, and you can run you can run a variety of sets, I like to go minus attack, you could go minus defense or spit F. This is able to knock off Gloking. This is able to knock off Gambit and Ting Lu and Claude Zire and a lot of things that Jolteon hates. So if you get hazards up and you knock with this Darkrai, you're really opening up Jolteon. And also these two just work well together. They wear down each other's special checks. Darkrai can threaten all those ground types that switch in with Ice Beam. Uh, Jolteon can handle those few things that are faster than Darkrai. Things like Dragapult, things like Setup Pokemon uh, that it can outspeed. So these two work well together and really help get that special chip damage going. And also Hazard Stack plus Knock with Darkrai, you now actually have a real feasible way to beat a stall team and actually really make progress, which this team did not have before. Now for Gliscor, there were some other changes I wanted to make. So one, uh, we've got two Pokemon on this team that are Terra Hogs. Darkrai loves it, Jolteon loves it, we are not having a third. So I wanted to replace this for a Rillaboom. This is one of the first changes I made. The reason for that is, well, first of all, it gives you some priority. So that helps a lot with the Roaring Moon situation. A Terra Grass Glide actually does a crazy amount of damage to Roaring Moon, uh, even when it is resisted. So having this really, really does help. Uh, Rillaboom gives you priority, which is a really big help against HO. It is just better against than uh, Ogre Pond regular, at least on a team like this. Ogre Pond regular definitely has its place in the tier, but on a team with this many Terra Hogs, no, it really doesn't. And on top of that, this Grassy Surge healing really helps out Jolteon because that Flame Orb is going to be negated by Grassy Surge. Now, we, I did talk about Hazard Stack though. We still do need Hazard Stack, and that's why I'm going to go with a pretty wild Gliscor set. So we're going to go with High Horsepower, and we're actually going to run this set here. Uh, and this, this is going to be a little bit interesting. But I wanted to run enough speed for Raging Bolt, and then go with a specially defensive Gliscor, which we need here because otherwise this team loses to Raging Bolt. Also remember 244, you want your HP to be divisible by eight when you're running that Toxic Orb. And lastly, I wanna make this Terra Ghost. We don't have a spin blocker, this thing's going to be stacking. We need to have some way of keeping hazards up. Iron Crown looks good, and the last change was to the Quackle Ball set. So I was trying this out, and it actually worked well. I was really surprised by it, but it, honestly, the defensive Quackle Ball was putting in work. It was getting the rapid spins off. It was switching into threats, things like Darkrai, things like Great Tusk, uh, King Gambit. It, 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 it surprised me. I'll be honest. It surprised me, and it was a lot better than I thought it would be. That being said, Aqua Jet, of course, was useless. We're going to go with Swords Dance. Now, this seems odd to run on a defensive set, but if you don't have Swords Dance, Goldango is walling you forever. This gives you a way to actually put enough pressure on your opponent that they switch into a non-ghost, and you can rapid spin. Now, of course, uh, certain Dragapult sets, Sinistra, they're going to wall you forever. You're never going to spin. And that is what it is. That's why we have boots on Darkrai, boots on Quackle Ball, and a Gliscor. Uh, we're trying to set ourselves up so we could win a battle if hazards do end up being up. And also, I wanted to make this uh, Ghost as well. We don't have a Spin Blocker, but this Quackle Ball, when it Terras, uh, with this much defense investment, is taking on Tusk Hits fairly well. 
Now, I was actually shocked when I tested this team. <clears throat> it performed really well. Uh, Jolteon was actually quite good. Uh, the, the incredible speed that this thing has with the Flame Orb was really nice. Uh, Rillaboom was extremely helpful too to uh, negate that damage. And the Darkrai put in a ton of work with the Hazard support from Gliscor. So even though this is a really wild Gliscor set, it actually did work uh, in a lot of situations. And yeah, this team was actually performing well in 1900s. Now that being said, it does rely a bit on your opponent's lack of knowledge. This Quackwaball set is very exploitable if your opponent knows what's up, uh, but there really isn't a way around that. We do need it to be defensive here uh, to switch into various threats, right? Things like Cinderace, uh, that would be, and King Gambit, that would be almost impossible to deal with otherwise. That So yeah, there definitely are problems. This is not a great team by any means, uh, but I would give it a... 6.5 out of 10 after these changes. Next up, we have Lantern Balance by Leo. Before we get into it and look at this team go, please remember to subscribe, like, and leave a comment if you're enjoying the video. Okay, so starting off here, we've got a really cool Lantern set. I'd say it's quite optimal. Uh, 120 speed for King Gambit, Scald, Ice Beam, Volt Switch, T-Wave with Terra Fairy. So note that Terra Fairy plus Volt Absorb means you will wall Raging Bolt forever, which is pretty cool. Paired with Classic, you always want to have Grassy Turn with Lantern, a CB Rillaboom, Fairly Standard Boots Tusk, a Magnet Pivot Raging Bolt, a Clefable here, just a Sticky Barb Rocks Knock set, and a Specially Defensive Moltres. Uh, so this team has its upsides and downsides. The first thing uh, that I'm really not a fan of is the speed. So this team has really nothing fast. The fastest thing is Great Tusk, which is absolutely terrible. A lot of faster breakers and sweepers are going to have, uh, have really a field day with this team. One example being Kyurem. Nothing on this team is faster than Kyurem, which is rough. Uh, also just weak to a lot of random sweepers, things like Iron Moth, Nasty Blood, Dark Ride, Calm Mind, Iron Crown, Roaring Moon, especially with this Moltres being spit it's going to get destroyed by a Roaring Moon. Uh, pretty kind of a rough matchup against Goliath score as well. Uh, not quite terrible. You can kind of deal with it with Clefable, but you're not really making progress against Gliscor uh, in any meaningful way, and Lantern Ice Beam is not killing. Uh, another thing, instant matchup loss against Stall. The only thing on this team with even a hope of doing damage to a Stall team is Raging Bolt, uh, which you really have to play absolutely perfectly uh, to, to get anywhere with that, and even then you probably need some luck. Uh, but it's, it's yeah, you're, you're not breaking past the stall with this team ever. And the Cura matchup is devastating. That's the last thing here. Uh, this Moltres, I imagine, is supposed to be a Cura Mancer. I imagine that's why it's specially defensive, but there really is no Cura Mancer here. Everything's getting destroyed by Ice Beam, Freeze Dry, and Earth Power. And uh, the very few things that could maybe kind of take it on, like sort of a Moltres and pray it doesn't get frozen, is going to get destroyed by a DD Icicle Spear set, which will absolutely run through this team. Uh, so yeah, that's not not great. So despite this team looking kind of well constructed at a first glance, I'm going to have to give this team a 4.5 out of 10. Just weaknesses to too many metagame threats. 4.5, maybe even a little generous, maybe more closer to a 4. Uh, but let's let's start fixing this team. So we're going to keep the Lantern. I do somewhat doubt if it's viable in OU, but if we're going to go with Lantern, Rillaboom is a great partner. Uh, so I agree there. Great Tusk does seem okay to keep on this team. We need to replace Raging Bolt, though. This team currently just does not have a strong enough breaker. At the moment, if this Lantern Volt switches on a Glow King, nothing's really coming in that's super scary, and I want to change that. So we're going to replace this for a Water Pond. So the other good thing is uh, this takes advantage of Rillaboom Grassy Terrain, and all those special walls Lanterns Volt switching on can bring this thing right in. So we're going to go with an SD Ivy Cudgel Power Whip to take full advantage of Terrain, and play rough. So we'll go with Adamant uh, just to boost that attack. We want this thing to be as powerful as a breaker as possible. And this also helps the stall matchup a lot and the Gliscor matchup. So it really just covers a lot of boxes by replacing Raging Bolt. Now we do also need some speed and that's going to mean these last two need to change. So the first thing we're going to do is add in a Gold Dango a Scarf Goldango. So this is going to give us some speed. I'm going to go with Shadow Ball, make it rain, 
Psy Shock, and Trick. So what this is going to do, uh, the reason for all these moves uh, is uh, fairly standard, just double steps, Trick. Uh, Psy Shock is to pressure Blissey in the stall matchup, ideally force it to Terra Dark. If the Blissey Terra Darks, the Dozo can't Terra Grass, which is obviously a very big deal if your way to beat stall is an Ogre Pawn. The next thing we're going to add, I, I typically like Terra Flying on these, uh, to bolster the webs matchup. Corviknight is going to be what's next. So the reason we replaced Moltres and we're going to go with a Fizz Def Corv, uh, which is a little scary. We're putting the weight of the world on the special side on Lantern Shoulders, but unfortunately we don't really have a better option here. And for an additional special wall, you can Terra Ogre Pond in a pinch. Now we need Corviknight, helps a lot against Roaring Moon and improves that Gliscor matchup because you have something that can safely get in on Gliscor, not get poisoned, U-turn and bring in the Ogre Pond. And if the Gliscor does decide to Terra, you can also Iron Defense and Body Press it down fairly easily. So we'll go with a defensive set here. And because we removed Clefable, got rid of the Rocker, we're also going to go to Tusk, take off Knockoff, and add Stealth Rock. We still have Rillaboom with Knock, and it's there's less of a need to have a lot of Knockoff users now, uh, now that that sticky barb Clefable is gone. So now we have some real power, uh, some better answers to some of those sweepers that were threatening before, an actual ice resist, and a way of having some speed control, things that can outspeed threats like Darkrai and Zamazenta and Dragapult. Now this team still has a lot of threats, a lot of things that are a big issue for it, and I wouldn't say it's an extremely strong team even after these fixes, but it's definitely a step up. I would give it a 6 out of 10 post changes. All right, last but not least, we have a Specs Iron Valiant H stack by Nebula. So we start off with a Specs Eyeball here, pretty standard set. Aura Sphere is a little uncommon for the most part, that you can see this a lot. Uh, then you've got an Iron Crown, pretty normal here. Once again, standard Landris, barely standard H Rot, a Scarf Goldengo, and a DD Dragonite. So I saw this team, I thought, okay. This looks pretty good, but I think there are some issues uh, that can be can be improved. Um, so first of all, two choice Pokemon on a team this frail and offensive. Uh, this is not quite a hyper offense. I would still call it an offense, but it's not a team that wants to be forced to switch a lot. So having having two Pokemon that are choiced, it did feel a little bit high. Next, this team is very bad against Darkrai, right? Like. If you lead Darkrai on, say, a Landorus, what is this team doing? Everything is dying. Nothing outspeeds Darkrai, and almost the entire team gets one shot. This gets one shot, this gets two shot, um, this one shot, one shot, one shot, and uh, this takes like 90 from an Ice Beam. So really rough Darkrai matchup. And then the last problem I had was, you're not winning against a stall team. You have, at the moment, you have Trick on Gold and you have Knock on Aatrot, but other than that, no real way to remove Boots, and the Hazard stack here, the element of that is is not going to be enough. The Landorus won't be able to ever get past the Gliscor, the Crown won't be able to get past uh, the Olimamola or the Blissey, especially without Psychic Noise, it's not going to be able to get past any of those. Iron Valiant is going to be hard-walled by Blissey, even if you predict it with Aura Sphere. Uh, Toxapex can scout, Claude's Ire. I mean, without Shadow Ball or Psy Shock, I mean, Claude's Ire is going to be walling it pretty hard, too. Your best shot is Aatrot, but it's an it, it Aatrot would basically, you'd essentially need Goldengo and Aatrot to solo a stall team because Dragonite's going to get hard walled by Dozo. So the stall matchup here is abysmal. You're never winning that. Uh, so there are a few changes I wanted to make. The first one is going to be this. So we're going to go Booster Energy on Iron Valiant. I want to make this set more flexible. I don't like the fact that it's locked in uh, to being that that choice specs. And with a booster special attack, you can bring it in early game and use it to break, or you can save it for later as a sweeper. And we're going to go with a Calm Mind Shadow Ball set, and it's going to be modest. So we are going to make this a breaker. And this does make the team a lot slower, but that will be addressed later. Uh, so this set is also just really threatening on Hazard Stack. A lot of things that would normally live a Vacuum Wave after a Calm Mind or two suddenly are not living a Vacuum Wave anymore. And of course, with uh, AV Gloking everywhere, uh, stocks of Choice Specs Valiant are way down, but this Booster Special Attack set with Terra Ghost can power through those, even those Assault Vest ones, 
pretty well. Uh, next thing on Iron Crown, I want to go Psychic Noise. Hazard Stack team, a team this offensive, it really isn't going to be that great of an abuser of Future Sight. You usually want Future Sight on more slow paced teams that have the time to position themselves to use it. Uh, for a team like this, I would much rather block a Goldengo from clicking Recover or block a Moltres from clicking Recover. Psychic Noise is just going to be more consistent, and I don't see this team abusing Future Sight very well at all. Next up, we have Landris. Standard set, it works, I like it. Uh, not much to say there. Now, this Aatrox, not a huge fan of, especially with this team struggling already a little bit against Ogre Pond. Uh, I am personally a Sucker Punch guy. Uh, really just personal preference. You also could go Admin on this, sort of personal preference there as well. And I would like to go Terra Ghost just to give you another spin blocker there. Now this Goldengo set, only change I'd make is Psy Shock. If you can force the Blissey on a stall team to Terra Dark, you can probably win the game with Iron Valiant. Depends on if it's a Claude's Iron stall, of course, uh, but either way, forcing a Blissey to Terra is never a bad idea, and it definitely is, is very solid here. And the last thing I wanted to do is actually change out this Dragonite. So even though Dragonite is a good sweeper on Hazard Stack, uh, it only really, it's sitting in the back for most of the game. I wanted a Pokemon that can contribute more throughout the game and help against Stall, and that is going to be a mixed Palt. We go Boots on this, Wisp, Darts, Hex, U-Turn, this gives us a lot. So not only does this help big time with the Stall matchup, uh, but it also provides us a real way of answering Darkrai. We can lead this against Darkrai and go for a U-Turn. We can go Samrot on a Dark Pulse, double into Dark Dragapult on the Focus Blast and U-Turn out. It's not great, this team still is threatened by Darkrai, uh, but this is a huge step up, right? It, it really does help to have something that can at least outspeed it. A difference between having a team that doesn't outspeed Darkrai versus one that does, it, the difference is you can really, really tell. So on this, we're going to run a little bit of an odd spread, 390 to outspeed most Zamadenza. We do want max special attack, and we're going to put the rest into uh, HP. Actually, we'll go four and attack and the rest in HP, uh, because we want to have uh, maximized chances to live a hit from Ogre Pond. So Ogre Pond is a really serious threat here. Um, that, <laughs> even with this change, is still going to be slightly problematic. Uh, but I would say enough Pokemon can live it. We have Terra Grass on Lando with Sucker Punch on Aatrox, Scarf Gold Dango to come in and out speed. Uh, it's sufficient. And of course, Ogre Pond generally does not enjoy facing Hazard Stack teams either. We do want to go Terra Ghost on this to help against that stall matchup and uh, against Goliath Score as well, so we can get that nice, strong Hex off. So after these changes, uh, a Darkrai matchup is better, stall matchup is much better, um, and we've got the team a little more flexible, fewer choice Pokemon, so you can maneuver it a little bit better. Uh, definitely improved, I would say this team is an 8 out of 10 afterward, but it still does struggle a bit with Darkrai, uh, things like King Gambit are pretty scary, and uh, it, it is overall still a little bit weak to Wellspring. Uh, but all the threats are now navigable, uh, so I would say this team is an 8 out of 10. Pretty strong, and it performed quite well on ladder. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.